Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are talking about how to make a cinematic photo series like this one. Of course, you can take the exact same principles that I use to make these types of photos and incorporate it into making a photo carousel as well, but there's definitely a little bit of nuance in making a split photo series versus a photo carousel because the crop plays a very big part in how these photos are actually made. So what exactly are these photo series and how do you go about making them? Well, there are a few other photographers that actually do put out photo series as well using splits. This is definitely a common concept to do and it's a nice and fun way to differentiate from actually just posting carousels all of the time. To make these interesting, you do need to follow a few principles. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on making them as best as possible. In my experience, there are some photo series that really don't get a lot of good engagement not even from Instagram, but just in general, they're definitely a lot weaker in what they are versus some of the other ones that I've posted in the past. So these tips will help you make them better. So the first tip is this idea of balance. The one thing you want to really make sure of is that you're not taking the subject of your photo or the point of interest and lining all of them up on one side of your frame. It would be very easy to take all of your subjects, move them to the very right side of the photo, and then they all make a line all the way down. And I think this actually makes it a little bit less interesting than if you were to find a way to balance out your subjects along the photo. Maybe one's in the middle, one's on the right, somebody's moving from left to right. There are different ways to think about it to really bring the viewer in to what it is you're trying to convey with these split series. Tip number two is to use a variation of shots. And what I mean by that is some of your shots have to be wide shots, maybe of a landscape or a building. Other ones are the detailed elements of your photos. And then another one can be something about the subject. Maybe it's a farther away shot or somebody doing something in the environment. Something that I really like to do is to take details of a building and take another person around that building and have the two sort of work off of each other to tell an interesting story. The reason why you wanna do this is because it's a good way to both convey the environment and put the subject within that environment to tell a better story. So in today's video, we'll actually be doing a POV through the distillery district and the financial district. And you'll notice that really it's about finding photos that work together that convey what's happening in that setting. And where I initially in today's video started in the distillery district, the way my compositions were working out, I had to move to the financial district to find interesting photos that actually told the story about what was happening in the morning. And then tip number three is to really think about the story and the mood of your photo series. It'd be way too easy to just take a whole bunch of photos, put them all together and come up with some sort of photo series. And at the end of the day, you're not going to get a good outcome because they're all so different. If you take three separate locations from three different days with three different subjects, you're likely not going to have a cohesive outcome that actually is a good combination of photos. Unless of course you're working off of themes like you pick the color red and all of your photos have red in them somehow and, and you figure it out that way. But the way I kind of go about it is I think about the story of the moment that I'm actually in. I stick to one location and I try to figure out how to convey the atmosphere in that location. And so that's the really important part. And this can be done from really trying to capture what the atmosphere is. Let's say it's rainy, there's a lot of clouds, a lot of fog, a lot of water. I'm gonna make a photo that captures that atmosphere. And then I might find some detail shots, maybe rain running off of an umbrella or a puddle shot or water running down the road to then get on a more granular level what exactly it is that's going on and find those fine details that really can help bring out your story. The number one thing that I found that really brings these photo series together is using a location and sticking to that location to find the photos themselves. There's a lot of advantages to sticking to one sort of part of your city or town or local area where the lighting remains unchanged, you have the same sort of characteristics in the buildings, you have probably similar people walking around. If it's a shopping center, people are shopping. If it's a financial center, people are wearing suits. And that helps build it all together a little bit more. And that would be the one thing I would recommend you really pay attention to is sticking to that one location 
and find the theme of that location to really bring out in your series. So with that, let's hop into today's POV video and you can see the behind the scenes on how I made this photo series. Kicking off this video near the St. Lawrence Market, I initially wanted to make the photo series in this area. There's a lot of good combinations of old and new that I thought would have made for an interesting photo. Uh, and that's what I was trying to do there with that building shot and then the bricks below it. But as you can see, there's really not a lot of people in this area. So it was fairly empty. And what I've noticed myself is that the city has like waves of days where things are actually busy and you can get interesting photos of people and there's lots of things going on. But this unfortunately was not one of them. I got this one detail shot because I thought it could combine into an interesting photo. So that was just a good example of one of the detail shots I talked about earlier. And I then decided to move on though because it clearly wasn't working out for me and I only have so much time when I go out and take some photos. This one was more just a trial and error than anything else. And that's what you have to keep in mind though. So I went out looking for this themed idea of old and new bricks, condos, new sort of buildings. And if it doesn't work out, you kind of have to think on the fly to make the most of your time. And I then decided to go back to Toronto's financial district. If there's one thing that you can count on lately, it's that the offices are actually coming back. <laughs> Regardless of what we're reading, I've noticed it. There's a lot more people uh, going into their office buildings than there was prior. And in the mornings, that does lead to some cool photos, but it does get old after a little while when it's all the same. So that's the fun part about these photo series is you can really find a way to take what's right in front of you, the seemingly mundane, like regular day stuff and turn it into something different, turn it into something new. And I flipped my goal from being that old new brick feeling into what is the morning commute, what aspects of Toronto lead to an interesting morning commute, something along those lines, that was what I was going for. And I ended up getting this detail shot of somebody smoking outside their car. I did end up using this in my photo series that I posted on Instagram a couple days ago. And that was a really interesting find because I didn't intend on actually using that one. That was more just one that was kind of for fun that it ended up working out afterwards. So when you're on King Street, you can always bet that you're gonna find some interesting streetcar photo that you can take. I think the photo I took there, I've taken a thousand times. Just because every time I come down, I grab that photo literally because I like it so much. I love that old building to the right of it <laughs> that you can see in that shot there. And now I would say the photos really started working out in the theme that I uh, course corrected myself on. So here I saw this guy smoking beside the Starbucks and this was a shot that I wouldn't say would have worked out horizontally, especially in my photo series. And that's because there's too many logos. One thing you wanna watch out for when you're taking a lot of these photos is there's so many logos around like the Starbucks logos, banners, that kind of thing. And instead you gotta look for detail shots like this one that you don't even know where this is in Toronto. It could be any building, but it's representative of the city itself. And this next shot coming up is a good example as well of like a shot that would tell a story if you had the right photos to complement it. That's that light to dark, details of the windows. There's a lot there that makes for an interesting photo versus like a guy smoking underneath a Starbucks sign or whatever. This shot I thought was kind of cool. I would have preferred that the bin wasn't below, but it is what it is. And then as I kept walking, I thought, okay, cool. I have two shots that I know are these detail shots that are about Toronto, that are representative of the city. Like what else can I use to build on that? And so I thought it would be interesting if I could take that shot of the light to dark on the windows and combine it with somebody in a suit walking somewhere. Um, that's why I was taking shots of the people crossing the street earlier, but then I came across this shot and Literally, this was, couldn't ask for more. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, this guy walking on his phone in a suit was the perfect combination for my photo set. Inevitably, I didn't end up using the light to dark photo. I ended up using that one. And I used that as like the principle for the rest of my ideas. Again, I'm always looking for variation in my photos, whether that's a building shot pure or a landscape shot, detail shots, photos of people, like whatever can be combined. And so this shot of Deneen Coffee Co. was a building shot that I thought could have worked out. But one thing that always gets me is the crop <laughs> at the end of the day, because you have to split your photos into three or four different photos. The crop kind of throw you off from how you thought you had to compose it initially. So I'm using a 70 to 200 here, which leads to great detail shots like this of the man, but it also makes it very difficult to get those Ys and then crop down 
to make sure it fits. So I would have needed like a 16 to 35 to make the Deneen shot actually work for me in my photos. Inevitably though, I kept walking uh, because I had like one or two good shots in my head. I thought the Deneen Coffee Co shot might have worked out depending on how I cropped things. So I was still keeping that in the back of my mind for future photos that I was looking for. But it's all about creating variation too. Because I had the light to dark shot, I had a wide shot of that person, I had the shot of Deneen. Now I'm looking for a detail shot of a person. I'm just, again, rolling with what I think I have. So the next shot I was thinking that would be cool was a shot of somebody commuting. And that really leads into the storytelling of the photo itself because it puts you in the position of somebody commuting. It makes you feel like you're a part of the environment, I think anyway, when you have detailed shots of the buildings or interesting shots of the buildings, people walking around you, and then something like somebody sitting in their car looking up at the city around them as they're waiting around. So I tried doing that with this person in this car, and let me tell you, the photo did not work out <laughs> to the most extreme extent possible. So I don't know what I was thinking on that one, but I ended up trying with a different one, grabbing this shot of the of a security guard here, and mid-chew, <laughs> would not recommend uh, to get something like that, to put it into a photo carousel. I mean, maybe it works out, but I thought it was definitely a, a, well, not one of my best photos. So I then kind of just took a pause, said, okay, cool. I think I have enough for my photo series. Let's see if I can get anything else. I like the way that the streetcar comes across on this shot. Again, I didn't want to include a streetcar in my photo series. So I just grabbed this one vertically in case I was going to use it anytime else. Unfortunately, with, because it's getting colder now in Toronto and the shade is around so much, you get a lot of opportunity to get too much blue in your photos. And then if you warm it up, it turns into a bit of a brown. So I wasn't too happy with that shot from a lighting perspective. This shot was kind of neat just as somebody smoking, but again, not something I would include in my photo carousels. And then as I got to Union Station though, I thought, great, Union Station, tons of commuters, right to the financial district, probably like 80% of them that are commuting. So this fits my theme perfectly. Is there any way I can capture like what the morning commute is from this location? And I thought as I turned around here that the staircase behind me was actually the perfect way to show the commute itself, people walking up the stairs as if they are, uh, are, as if they're going to work. So I saw all these people walking up the stairs. I grabbed a wide shot of this. I had to walk very far back because of my 70 to 200. And I ended up including this one in my photo carousel or my, and, and my photo series. And then I wanted to get some more shots of people crossing the street. So I saw this guy on his phone with his fogged up glasses. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, he's got his mask under his chin, obviously. And then with the Royal York here, I'm always struggling to find a way to incorporate it into photos without only doing a photo set of the Royal York. But I tried anyway. And so I saw this taxi cab out in front and wanted to capture the taxi cab waiting at Union Station in front of those flags. And so when I grabbed this shot here, I actually think it's pretty cool. It would have been cooler, I think, if the van was a car and the fire hydrant wasn't there. I can always Photoshop out the fire hydrant, but I didn't think the photo was good enough to take the time to do that. And then I thought, okay, great. So I have a bunch of detail shots. I have a few wide shots that I can play around with. I have a story that I'm working on. Maybe I can grab some other interesting shots of people. I saw this guy sitting on the bench in, this, in the financial district. So everything stays within that same theme and I'm gonna say that shot's like seven out of 10, more just a candid moment than anything else. Thought I saw these two guys standing here on the staircase, that might be interesting, but that post kind of got in the way of making it an interesting photo. And then my last attempt was looking for actual people that might be going into office buildings that I could include. So I saw these two guys in their suits. I saw this guy waiting outside. He's got a scarf all dressed nice, like as if he's going to an interview probably. And then uh, one guy up in the Tim Hortons. So with that, I hope you found this video useful. These photos are a ton of fun to put together. So I hope that this inspired you to possibly go out and give it a try. Again, my number one recommendation is to start in one location, focus on what the theme is of that location and how you can take some photos to combine them and really tell the story of that area without relying on a carousel. Both carousels and these types of split photo series are very hard to do, but I find these particularly challenging because you have to worry about that balance component and especially composition, where you have to really account for what your composition is beforehand when you do then go to split them and add them onto a canvas. So 
I do recommend you still give it a try though. If you did find this video useful, be sure to like and comment down below or send me a DM on Instagram. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.